Without further ado, this woman is the envy of many and has the admiration of both of us and so many others. Lori Locust, the assistant defensive line coach for the Super Bowl winning Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, you know, there are so many moments, Lori, from that Super Bowl run that stand out, but you on the field at the end made oh. Aaron and I just cry with the look, emotion look from at the my boys. Eyes right we'll now. get into all of it. The men, I should say, right? Um, we are honored to have you on the Calm Down podcast, and we will not Mm-mm. calm down about all the things that you have done and the Thank barriers you so that you, you have guys, broken. Really, it's, Welcome it's an honor. I've been show. hyped about this all day, which is probably why I was 30 minutes early, but thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I, Chris has said it perfectly that, and I've DM'd this to you, Lori. Um, Chris and I, by the way, after that Super Bowl, we got on the phone. It was her, Carissa that called me first. We were walking the dog and we were just, I think we talked for about three hours after the Super Bowl. And Carissa was like, I just, this was unbelievable. The next morning, w- forget about you, Lori, it's more about us. We were in our jammies watching <laughs> the highlights and watching, and I couldn't wait for the mm-hmm. mic'd up. And the mic'd up was one of the best things. And that is where we saw goosebumps, uh, the exchange with you and JPP. And every time I talk about it to people, I just choke up. And because so many things, and obviously the one that we can all relate to is that we are women. Mm. And the one thing in my career that I just want is validation from those guys that play, those coaches on the right. sidelines, those GMs that are in those press boxes. And to see that man embrace you the way he did, <laughs> oh, like just knock it off, knock okay. it off. I found you on, <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> I started DMing you. I send you quotes. I like your stuff. And I actually was thinking about today, I just feel like you've become like a fairy godmother to me because I've started like venting to you on DM. I just, you are so wonderful. And this is your fan club if you were looking for it, you know? I'm so honored. You have no (laughs) idea. I mean, I've seen you guys. I've watched you guys well before, you know, I've gotten to this level. So please understand like what you do and how you do it. Um, speaks more to to more women than you know, because that's like you said, I mean, it's a validation, but it's also leading by example where we know what the knock is sometimes for women in sports. And when you do it the right way and you have the right reputation and your work ethic speaks for you before you even get into a room, there's no better. So to be affiliated with you guys and to sit here and talk to you, i it, it's really like, I just, I was so excited to um, have this happen. Wow. So, well, we're even more humbled by, yeah. by that. Um, well, no, I know or... that you were hired by the Bucks in 2019. You became the first female position coach in the NFL. And, and I, you know, just reading a little bit about where you came from, the fact you played and so forth. I, I'm curious to know with you and, and Chris, I don't know if you feel the same way, For me, it was never about, I'm a woman, I'm different. I just want to fit in. I just want the guys to respect me. I want them to know I am obsessed with the game. I have so many questions. Do you get tired of of hearing things like the first female position coach in the NFL? I know you're proud of it, but how much is it just like, okay, let's move on. I just want to fit in. I mean, I definitely, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't do a lot of like self-reflection where like stuff like that, like becomes markers. So I think that a huge honor, yeah. right? Um, but I never, like you said, I never set out to be that or to have a title or, you mm-hmm. know, to rip and run with this flag of being the first or whatever. It's in my mind, it's it's not just getting here, it's staying here, right? And um making an impact, Love it. being, you know, viable to the organization, helping the team win, helping the players get better, still continuing to learn as a coach. I mean, I'm not it wasn't ever like my end goal to just be the first and be like, okay, that's it. Now I'm done. You know what I mean? And kind of fall back on, on laurels and try and make a career out of it. I, um, yeah, I don't, I don't ever think in those terms. So sometimes when I get that, ask that question, I have to think about it and it kind of takes me like off kilter because I'm like, oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what it was. But that's never been my motivation, uh, as far as like coaching or, you know, just being part of, uh, a staff, at all. Just want to keep rolling. I've been very blessed to get my first extension with the Bucks. So hopefully that's, you know, a good, uh, 
good indicator yeah. right, to uh, to the rest of the people out there that you know I'm I'm with them and I'm blessed and we're looking to uh, turn it around. I don't want to say run it back. That was Kansas City, it's all right? Go for two. Whatever we want to do. <laughs> what What are the Bucks saying? Uh, what are you guys saying at camp? What's going to be? Yours? I don't know what the catchphrase is yet. I've heard, uh, you know, go for two. You know, whatever. I, I'm sure somebody will come up with something a lot catchier than that. Lori, I um, am employed by Fox, but I'm also employed by Fox Bet, which is a um, wagering Hello. platform. In our wagering world, oh, we call go. double down. So I'm going to say for the box, you guys are doubling down on your money because you're that confident in what you're doing. I I just have to, I mean, again, you, we, there's so many things I want to ask you, but I just got to uh, know having a front row Ugh. seat to what you guys did this year. I mean, of course, Tom Brady comes back, all of that. But man, Tom's not a dumb man. He came to Tampa because yeah. that yes. defense. So what was it like for you and to just know that this, th- it was so, I mean, like I literally have goosebumps everywhere. Talk- like just, I'm, I'm not, wasn't, I'm from Seattle. I mean, geez, I'm like trading, <laughs> like, you know, turning on my hometown, but I like winners, Lori, and watching this um, from afar, I can only imagine the emotion um, for you. Can you describe it at yeah. all? What this so, was like? Um, if you think about when we all came in uh, initially and the year that we had uh, the first year, We knew that we had the talent base. We knew that we had the scheme, but there was a culture shift that needed to happen. And um, BA certainly uh, drove that culture change. Uh, But then Tom seemed to be the missing piece for it, right? So it's not Mm -hmm. that anybody totally changed in the defense. Obviously, you know, we pick up other people, but the, um, the building had this lift when he came in. And, you know, they talk about it being the Brady effect. And and I have to tell you that that's true. And it's not that the guys got better because they were very good. Um, it's just we had another year in the system. We had a professional come in who was a leader, who was a quiet leader, who was a champion in his own right. And it just was the right missing piece to the puzzle um, for everybody to be like, you know what, we're going to be we're going to be contenders. Like we can play at that level. We can dominate games. And the thing looking back is on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a game by game basis, you're so locked in to, I have my opponent in front of me and you can celebrate for about five minutes after that game. But like on that plane ride home, I'm breaking (laughs) film down because we have to get ready for the next opponent probably by midday on Monday. So there's this constant churn of one gets put to bed. And meanwhile, as that one's coming up, you're already preparing for the next opponent. So there's never really time where you sit back and you're like, wow, like, you know, we're doing great. You know, we really dominated that game because you can always find things to work on and you can always find things to fine tune. So it wasn't until the like the minutes after the Super Bowl. Um, and I know that I know Aaron saw the mm-hmm. picture. I don't know if you saw the picture when my son and I collided <laughs> and yeah. while laying on the turf. Um, but that's kind of like when it hit, you know, we're exhausted. We're the COVID restrictions, just everything like hit. That's yeah. when the emotions hit mm. more so than during the year, because you're just, you're, you're so rote you're so repetitive in your preparation. There's really no time to allow that kind of stuff to filter in because it can break focus. And and that's something that we just try so hard not to have happen. My last question on Tom. Um, I, I remember talking to Sue this, uh, this past year, JPP interviewing Shaq Barrett. And one thing Troy Aikman and I had said after we saw you guys win in the um, NFC championship game was, the defense, the first thing they said was we we found that missing piece to the puzzle. And they always were so great in complimenting him. Mm-hmm. And, and Troy had mentioned to me, you know, a lot of times guys could be like, all right, come on. I am so freaking sick of talking about Tom Brady. But that just shows the respect. I'm curious how somebody like him was able to come over and relate to the defense. Because he's got to figure out his toys over here on the offense. Like, how is he getting? And those are some strong personalities on the defense that Chris and I adore. But how did he, I mean, yes, I get it. He's number 12. He's walking in the building. But 
it was never like it's like, oh, my God, it's Tom Brady in our locker room. It's like, that's our boy, Tom. You know, we're going for he's going for seven. How was that? How did that you see that unfold? I think it was really organic. I don't think that there was really anything marked like he sat down and had a powwow with them. You know what I mean? (laughs) But I think that when you talk about like somebody like Sue, who's the uh, ultimate professional in everything that he does, when he saw now the leader of our offense be in that same mindset, be in that type of championship sort of mentality, like all the time, I think Mm -hmm. it just really let those guys say, you know what, he's okay. And we're going to stand behind him and we're going to take care of our side of the ball because we want to give the ball back to him. Like every time Mm -hmm. we were on the field, that was the main intent. We want to get the ball back to the offense. So I think just by, again, a mutual respect, the careers, obviously, some of them had crossed over. Um, It just was a natural fit that I don't think anybody could have realized until it actually happened and he was in the locker room. So cool. You know, Lori, we were um, watching, uh, we were doing a Fox watch party and there was, uh, Terry Bradshaw was on, Coach Jimmy Johnson, uh, Marshawn Lynch, and then at the end, Ray Lewis came on. And so at this point, it was a foregone conclusion that you guys were going to win the Super Bowl. And I asked Ray, I said, you know, what makes Tom Brady so great? And this will always stick out to me. He said, Tom Brady's great, but greatness is making everyone else around you better. And he said, that's what Tom does. And I found it to be such an interesting, to Aaron's point, when that defense knows that we can get the ball back into the hands of the man that's going to get the right. job done. Um, and then it's easy to to be humble by that. And so I can I can only imagine how much fun this run was for you. But as you you know previously mentioned, it's not over, right? It's not enough to just have that. And I love that. I mean, that's, that's, it's why you play the game, right? Is to win and to keep going sort of, how do you rally your yeah. group now here in the off season, uh, to turn your, your attention forward and celebrate the victory of course, but turn your attention forward. I think it's, uh, I think it's, I don't even want to say that it's easy because, um, again, going back to the very first year, right. We knew we were out of contention for any type of playoffs. And there was something about the young guys' enthusiasm to still really want to play the game, right? Which stuck out to me because Mm -hmm. I'm not at this level, obviously, but like at lower levels, sometimes, you know, when you're out of it, some guys check out and they're just kind of like, you know, they're going through the motions. They're just not really engaged in the process. Whatever happens, happens. They just want to get the season over with. It was never like that for the young guys. And that stuck out to me because that's different. That's special. So now we go through this season, the the young guys are still learning. The young guys are still, there's so much upside and uptick that you're going to see from our defense with the young guys having a third year in this system this year. And um, they can't wait to get back onto the field and start to play again. So in everybody's mind, it's not really, you know, oh, we're Super Bowl champs, you know, we're this and we're that. That's kind of like, it's it's great. It's it's a dream come true, but that's been put to bed for all of us. Um, and yeah. I think B.A. set the tone pretty well, too. He's like, you know, we're not going to be complacent. Mm-hmm. We're going to go out and work. And by treating them in the manner that they've always been treated at this stage of our season, it's just really a clear message. Like, okay, that was great. Now, you know, what do we do this year? Yeah. And the guys have already bought into that. So I don't know that we're really going to have to amp them up any more than we already are. And like we talked about with the crowds being allowed back this season, um, it's just going to be a whole other aspect for them that's just going to set them, you know, through the roof. I can't wait. And they can't either. I, I have two questions. Okay. One, now that all the fans are coming back, I wonder how many new best friends you have and how <laughs> they're all asking for tickets. <laughs> and then my my second question, it kind of just your, your startup with BA, Bruce Arians, there's no cooler mm-hmm. cat out there, win or lose your booze. Yes, please. Right, Carissa? Um, just the opportunity he, he gave you and what that yeah. means to you and, and you know, how you'll always hold him up um, because of it and, and just, you know, getting into the NFL because of B.A. Yeah, no, no doubt. Um, first on the the ticket thing, everybody <laughs> already knows. Don't ask me. <laughs> don't ask me. Don't get him. Don't, don't you know. 
don't don't want to be with your feelings hurt. Don't want to ask me for tickets. <laughs> um, and yeah, BA, uh, it, you're right. There's there's really nobody like him. And to have um, to have him have the staff that we do, to have the connections and the loyalty be so important to him, and to be a part of that is mind blowing. You know, obviously my, uh, my days with him go back to temple mm-hmm. when he first started coaching, um, so cool. coach Max husband. Yeah. There's a couple of guys on staff that were, uh, fellow, uh, teammates of my ex husband. Mm-hmm. And one of our position coaches was his position coach at temple. So there's a lot of ties to this staff, but the people that BA surrounds himself with, he knows, and he knows that they can do the job and he trusts them to do it. And the autonomy in the building, what he allows Todd to do, what he allows Byron to do, uh, that's second to none too. So it's not even just, you know, giving me, giving MJ, you know, a start in the NFL, but it's looking past what the packaging looks like and looking at the the promise and the potential and the chemistry on staff. He doesn't like the word chemistry. I, I still say chemistry. Um but how all why doesn't he like the word chemistry? I'm not really sure. Um, but I think oh. he thinks that it's just, you know, it it's a working model, not just something, you know, that just I don't know. He, I think that's one of those words he doesn't like. I'm I'm not sure why. <laughs> We're gonna have to ask him, Chris. I no, I was just lately, he's like, I don't like the word chemistry. Hmm. So um, but I, I think that it's just he he understands that it doesn't have to look perfect to get perfect results. And I think that we're just, you know, we're an example of that. But man, it works. It really works. He might not like the word um, chemistry, but he likes the word culture. Uh, You had a fantastic article in the USA Today. And there was a great paragraph that I found so important. And Aaron, with your affinity to Alabama, um, BA had mentioned the story that legendary Alabama coach Bear Bryant had told him that it's so important in building that culture within the locker room, getting everybody to buy in. And it says how he told, um, I'd, I'd rather hear it from you than, than read the article back. But, um, you know, he talked about how he told you to be yourself. Mm. Could you replay a little bit of that conversation when he brought you into the this building, albeit you guys had history, but now at, at this next level? Sure. I'll take it back a little bit further than that. When I was working in Birmingham uh, with the Iron and uh, had gotten my resume in front of BA and got a, an email back about 10 minutes later um, to say, you know, I'll get, I'll be in touch, you know, which would have been enough <laughs> right then. But, uh, I was, um, I was waiting to pick up something at like a local store and I got a phone call and I didn't recognize the number. So it didn't look like a Florida number. So I didn't pick it up and it was BA and I called him back and we had a 10 minute conversation. And it was just basically that it was like, you know, I don't want you coming in for media attention. No problem. Not me, never has been. I want you to, you know, learn as much as you can. I don't want you to filter who you are. Um, and I want you to feel like you're comfortable enough to be able to um, add in when you can and learn as much as you can. And I'd like you to come work for me. Perfect. Check. Done. Sometimes he's a man of little words, uh, but he says a lot. And um, having Casey as a mentor, working for Todd, You know, I do have a tendency to kind of lay back a little bit um, in coaching style, whereas like at the lower levels, like in arena or in semi-pro, I was a lot more um, involved and engaged sometimes. But I recognize the opportunity that's here to be mentored and to learn because I'm now part of BA's extended coaching tree. I'm part of Mm -hmm. Todd's coaching tree. I'm part of Casey's coaching tree. And when not if this staff starts to go in directions because that's how this industry is. I want to position myself in a manner that they're going to be like, yeah, Lo can do the job. We'll take her with us or Lo can do the job. We'll recommend her somewhere else. So he knew that, you know, the only way you succeed is being authentic um, and just really kind of like working hard and putting your nose down. And that's what I've been able to do with this staff. And it's been great. Lo, what is your dream job? What what do you look to as being the end-all be-all for you? It, more than this right now? Yeah. Well, uh, what's, yeah. The, what's the goal? 
Yeah. I mean, I think the if you're talking like short term goal um, just to stay employed in the league and uh, long term, I mean, I'd love to have my own D-line room someday Um, and be one of those defenses that we're talking about right now and have those athletes that we're talking about right now and dominate uh, offenses like we're talking about right now. Beyond that, you know, it's just it's almost too much to like, you know, talk about because that's uncharted territory, right? Um, I I don't know how far I can go, but I'm certainly open to all opportunities. But I think in my mind, the the D line room or a backers room or something like that would be an amazing feat mm-hmm. to have. Beyond that, you know, we'll we'll let it ride out. But uh, the most important thing is to stay here enough and long enough to uh, to see anything on the next level happen. Well, Lo, there's, you know, it it remains to be seen where you go, um, but we know where you've been. And for those that are new to your story, would you mind giving a little background and an overview? Because this doesn't no. just happen. Um, right. You don't end up in the NFL um, the way that you have without a probably many detours along the way. So how would you summarize your ascension to this position? Oh boy. Um, so Aaron mentioned I played. So I started playing um, full contact football in Harrisburg when I was just about to turn 40. Um, raising two boys um, that were pretty small at the time and working full time. So what did you do? Uh, what were you I doing that you were wa- working full time? Oh, I, I am an insurance. Oh, geek really? To the <laughs> Oh, I've been God. looking to lower my premium. So if we can just <laughs> yes. talk about that offline. Sure. I am. Um, I can talk to you about liability, workers' comp insurance, car insurance. Hey. I got it. We're good. Um, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, for like 25 she does it all. Years. Yeah. So that was like sales, marketing, underwriting. So a lot of those skills actually have come back into play in some of the coaching things that we have to do. So that's that was a huh. plus. But um, I got hurt really bad um, with my knee uh, and then started coaching the women's team because I didn't want to be away from the game. So I coached there for a couple of years and then I went to high school level and I was at the high school level uh, for nine years uh, at Susquehanna Township. From there, I did men's semi-pro in Harrisburg and in Virginia. um, And that was a culmination of probably five or six years. I did men's arena For three years, I did showcase teams uh, in Canada and Philly and Florida, and then uh, went to Baltimore uh, to the Ravens on the Walsh uh, internship program, and Uh, then to Birmingham Iron, and then now with Tampa. Hardest time. What was the hardest point? in this journey, getting here to Tampa, what what do you remember where you were like, maybe not on the ground being dramatic, like me reenacting a video, music video in my head, but just like <laughs> where you're like, oh, come on. Like, really, this is hard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think always trying to balance it out when the kids were little that I never right. wanted to miss anything that they had and I never wanted to take away from anything that they wanted to do because of this. Right. Because it was always on the fringe. I always had to work. Um, I always had to make sure that they were taken care of. I think what happened where it was like the lowest is that the job that I had at a media group, no names mentioned, um, when I got the Baltimore (laughs) internship, uh, the internship obviously, you know, was six weeks and no job really should keep you on. But I was hoping because it was a sales position, they would at least let me work up to the time and then come back afterwards. Well, they fired me three weeks before um, I went. So I went to Baltimore with no job, no benefits, um, no source of income. Uh, When I came back, I just started to like immediately go in survival mode. I I got out of the apartment that I was in. I moved into a friend of a friend's house to house sit. I sold like all of my furniture, everything that I could think of to get rid of. Um, And that's when I worked in the uh, pet food warehouse and I walked dogs (laughs) and it was just, yeah, really. Oh, the (laughs) smell was amazing. Um, Yeah. That was at a time when my older son's already, you know, established. He's out in California. He's doing his thing. But my younger son was still in college and I was paying for his Mm. tuition out of pocket. And it was like a crossroad, right? So it was either like, 
I either had to try and make it work or I was going to have to go back to work and just put it to the side. Like you said, like sometimes I always think like your path is never straight. You do have to go off the path and then you have to find your way back. You have to work your way back to it. And it's not like I hadn't done it before. I was prepared to do it again, but it just, that was a pretty low point because, you, you know, like as a mom to not be able to provide that was the worst feeling. And I was getting to that point where I wasn't, if if it was just me, it would have been okay. Like, look, I can do without almost anything for them. uh, That was wicked. So in, in about that time, um, a former player called to talk to me about how my experience was in Baltimore. And I was telling him, you know, some of the stuff that was going on, it was cool that he called because, you know, it's nice when, like you said, you have the respect of the guys and they're calling, you know, to check in on their coach. And I had a friend that I had met who was the D-line coach at Dartmouth um, at a convention that I drove to. Well, another long story about, you know, sleeping in the car to try and get to a, a conference in Carolina but he had invited me to go up to Dartmouth and it was like, I didn't have the money, right? I either paid for gas and did a couple of things or I made this trip to Dartmouth. And the guy was like, you know what? He's like, you always help me. He's like, you always slid me $20 for gas or for food. And he Venmoed me a little lump sum of money so I could go to Dartmouth and just be around football. And it was just like, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. universe, I got it. We're going to go full speed ahead. And, um, from there, I got the call to go to Birmingham, and um, then the rest of it started to just really pick up speed till I got here. Lori, I don't think it's a coincidence that you work in a sport that's all about team, yeah. you know, where you've had to lean on people throughout your journey. Um, but it is a one collective, one collective team, right? You, you, it's not a single yeah. individual sport. Um, I could go on and on and on, and I know you have other things to do, so we'll let you go soon. But I just, I'd be remiss if. I didn't ask you where the love of football yeah, that's came good. from. Uh, my, mine's from my father. Aaron's is, of course, from her father as well. Where did your love of football come from? You know what? I, I have no idea. <laughs> um, <laughs> no one in my family um, was really into football. Like my mom and her side of the family would watch the Redskins because mm-hmm. that's where she was born and she grew up. My dad was a golfer. Like to my left, the U.S. <laughs> Open is on right now because we've just been checking the stuff all day. Um, but yeah, nobody else. Wow. Um, I just remember, uh, the family used to go to like, uh, Thanksgiving day games. There was a big city rivalry back in Harrisburg. And then we'd go home and eat. That was like, trend, uh, the tradition on Thanksgiving. But, um, I was five years old and I was watching TV and the Steelers were on and they were terrible. Um, and there was just something about it that caught my eye and I have not looked back and unabashedly have been a Steelers fan for 52 years now. Um, And just remember like all of the games, I mean, you know, obviously you know how old I am. I like, I saw the Immaculate Reception game. I was watching that game. So to just have the ability to go back into like the football, like grimy, great, like, time when you know it was probably terrible for the players but it was great for fans um it that's where it started and it just it never left me played in the backyard with the guys traded the cards with you know the neighborhood Mm -hmm. boys I mean it was just always a part of or around me um and then when I got to play just kind of reignited a different kind of love for the game and then it took off from there well I mean no wonder you're on the defensive side of the ball the steel curtain come (laughs) on now I mean, Have you met Terry Bradshaw? We though? Terry yeah. B- yeah. Yeah, exactly. So he, I've never met Terry. That would be like amazing. Oh, but, we can make uh, that happen. Yeah. My, Lori. Oh, that would be amazing. Oh, goodness. we'll get him on the that phone right now. Do you want to talk to him? Oh my God. Do it. Do it. Oh my God. Stop. We're going to call him right yeah. now. Oh, We're going to call yes. him right oh now. My God, oh my God. He's probably like answer. on the ranch or doing some reality show. And I show. hope he has pants on. Do you know, have that reality show. Well, so. Well, we won't FaceTime. Oh boy. Side note, though, my spirit animal was Jack Lambert. So that's Aww. who I was every time we played in the backyard. God, I hope he answers. See if he answers. Yeah. If not, we'll facilitate <laughs> We'll facilitate a FaceTime later. Oh, You my have to God. be Come on, Terry. I mean, hey, darling. You guys are the best. Very busy, this yeah. guy, <laughs> with the reality Lots show. Lots of shows. He's probably selling yeah. something somewhere. He's on the ranch. 
a bourbon or something. But um, all right. tell him well, to call we'll, you we'll, immediately. We'll make that happen. Yeah, I'm going to message him. He's not really one with. Oh, I actually was going to ask you. Um, I'm big right now just because of of crap in my life. Any books you highly recommend reading? Any quotes you live by? Anything? I just feel like I can't like breathe in enough what you're putting out there in the universe. So I just you're such a a great person to learn from. And I didn't know if you recommend anything or that you you have something by your bedside you recommend. So yeah, I mean I I'm I'm really anxiously awaiting the Nicole Lynn yeah. book. Um, yes. she represents me and I can't wait to like read that book, but, um, you know what, listen, I wish I was as worldly to be able to tell you, like, this is the last book that I read. And I just, I don't, you don't have, have time. time. You're really breaking down awful. film. Well, I should use this. <laughs> no, I should use this time to do stuff like that. But, um, so there's two things. What I will tell you is that, um, with the new house and Krista, you'll love this. Thanks. I'm kind this of decorated woman. myself. So I've been looking at your I'll help you. ideas, but so listen, so I'm trying to force a color scheme into like a house that does not support this color. scheme. Lori, why <laughs> so are you trying to play a four, three defense when you're a three, four scheme? What are we doing here? Stay in no, the colors. I know. We'll break this down. I we'll break know. this down it, in, in a language you can understand. Let's not force it. You know? Okay. What what's the color scheme I you know, want? I know. So, okay, so this is the other thing. I'm kind of like all over the board. I think you'll understand this. It's a it's a combo. Mediterranean okay. coastal Whoa. farmhouse. That's not that far off. There That's not that far off. Mediterranean and yeah. coastal can go. We can go Italian coast with the Mediterranean and coastal. Oh, that so be, that's fine. Yeah. And then we can bring in some wood elements for the farmhouse. When we get off here, I'm going to get all the pictures from you and I'll help you put it all together. This is no in problem. In fact, she'll have oh, Terry right. come to your house I'm, I'm and like, build it like, up for his yeah. reality See? show. <laughs> now Terry? we're talking. Oh, Jesus. There we go. Yeah. That's, that's I'm happy thing. to help. But, uh, Aaron, the other, the only other thing is I do a lot of... Um, I do a lot of like meditative type of just like kind of like rebalancing, recentering yeah. um, activities like daily. And it's usually while I'm walking the dog, like super early in the morning. It's just, you know, taking in, you know, the area. Yeah. It's so pretty down here. And um, just, you know, being grateful and just having that like kind of daily like walk and talk mm-hmm. kind of yeah. uh, faith mm-hmm. walk. I'll call it. And um, it's, it's, it just really helps to, uh, to kind of put everything in perspective. You guys are, are being um, very Zen and very positive. I'm going to be petty for a second. Who, in, you don't have to, maybe you don't have hey. to name names if you don't want to, but who's someone in, on your path to your position now that was like, that ain't never going to happen. And that when you sat there with that Lombardi trophy, you thought to yourself, you know what? My, you don't I have to it. name names. Like, I just like, what was your, no, you don't have to name names. <laughs> There's been a few. There's been a few for sure. Um, you know, and I thought about like unfollowing them, but then I thought it's better for me to let them see all this stuff now. Yeah, sorry. That they'll never get to <laughs> if I'm going to be a little bit petty, um, you know, on the backside of it. And I know, like, I, I've told, like, um, you know, the women at the forum, there's a lot of times where, you have to make a mark decision me to carve people out of your life that really don't bring you yeah. value. Yeah. And that you have to be okay knowing that you're going to be cordial with that person, but you don't ever, ever have to give them any energy ever again. And it's okay. And you can move forward and you can be successful and they can watch you on Sunday. Ooh, period. They can amazing. buy a ticket. And I will not be leaving one at will call. Sir or ma'am, whoever you can that actually was watch my D line chase around no. quarterbacks all day for five sacks <laughs> in a game, suckers. <laughs> oh God! Oh, so, <laughs> Lori, I will help you with anything with your house if you give me a little dirt on JPP that I can throw mm-hmm. into this interview. I need this. I need some some scoopage. Yeah, he's um. God, I'm. I mean, you guys saw. I'm so proud of him. You know what I mean? Um and. Everything he came back yeah. from, everything he came back from last year to like be on the field. And like he just, he just fucking leaves all of it out there. Like he's, he's yes. done at the end of a game because he's just, he, he, he's just such a fighter. And like you don't, 
you can't coach that. Um, you can't, it, that's so like internal to him. It's so special. He's such a special athlete and a, and a special guy. And I've heard, you know, like the knock, you know, sometimes he's like, he's, you know, a misunderstood player and, you know, blah, blah, blah. He's never been anything, but very, very like nice to me, very approachable, very professional. And I just, I really, really enjoy him wow. as a person. And I'm just so glad that he's just kind of like that wild card, like that I can't imagine an OC has headaches, right. doesn't have headaches prepping for, you know what I mean? Cause you got to pick your poison. Like yeah. who do you prep for? Do you prep for Shaq? Do you prep for JPP? Do you prep for Vita? Do you prep for Sue? Mm. Like, Mm-hmm. Who do you prep for? Do you prep for Devin? Do you prep for Levante? Like, and I was telling Aaron, you know, uh, Tryon this year, you know, might be a little bit of a force too. So it's going to be a really kind of pick your poison type of year. And, and we, that's what I think we're really good all about. Oh, yeah. We were talking there. about with JPP and Cursa doing this interview. It is. He bet it. He bet on himself when he left New York. It was like, I'm watch me. I'm going to bet on myself and respect to him. And he has been yeah. through so much. And yep. I just think the way he's handled it, it has been just so classy. Yeah. I think I was, I know I was crying to Chris yesterday, just talking about his story. He's just somebody I'm just so happy I got mm-hmm. to cover. And it's just a great, great guy. Lori, we will end. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Go he ahead. is. Oh, no, you're Go good. You're good. I was just going to say, people gave him a chance. You know what I mean? They'd have the same type of feeling about him instead of just kind of. Yeah taking some of the past yeah. into account. But, we will we will yeah. end this incredible was- <laughs> time with you um, with, for me, a simple question. What is the best part mm. of your job? Aww. Just getting to go to one buck <laughs> every day, being around the guys. Yeah, I, it's just all of it. It's all of it. Just being able to wake up in the morning and make that trip has been an incredible gift. Can we laugh so, about one thing well, with being a woman in this industry? And I I do know that you want to get male dominated out of the conversation, which I like. But I always tell people one of the best parts of my job, besides yeah. having the best seat in the house, is the line to the women's room is not that long compared to the men's line. It's like, suck it! <laughs> no. No. How about that? And like a lot of the times when we travel, I'm like, I get pissed. Me because too. Like, like, me too. I'm like, get out of here. <laughs> Guys walk out of our bathroom and I'm like, are you serious? You have your own line. Get in it. Like, or like 8,000 other choices. So yes. like, can you please leave that one stall for me? Yeah. I, um, I think I can't remember. It was my first year. It may have been Carolina. There was the guy in the bathroom and it was like, um, it was like our, our, like we're switching over. So offense goes. So sometimes, you know, like you can have like 30 seconds. Yep. It's a TV timeout. I'm like, I got to go to the bathroom. There was a guy in the women's bathroom and I was like, fuck it. Sure. And I went and stalled next to him. I'm like, dude, if you don't mind, I don't I'll, I'll go into the school. guy's restroom <laughs> sometimes. Man, the women take too long. I said, what do we bring the whole yes. makeup kit in here? What are we doing? Let's go. Let's go, ladies. I need to use the bathroom. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Well, yes, Lori, I you're incredible. Agree. Thank you so much for your time. You and I will talk decorating and we will talk schemes uh, throughout the rest of the year. Thank you for your time. You're amazing in so many ways. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Love you. you. Can't wait Thank to uh, give you a hug Appreciate on the field so when much. we see you out in LA, when the Bucks come to town mm-hmm. and we've got to get this Terry Bradshaw um, introduction to happen. Carissa will make there sure of it. On it. Okay. Double down, Lori. Double down. Oh my God. You guys. For sure. <laughs> Bye. Down. You're amazing. Thank Thanks, you guys. Lori. Calm Down with Aaron and Carissa is a production of iHeartRadio. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.